Kia ora whanau, Kepa Muir, back here at the Raw HQ podcast, and today's guests are Marcel Parkinson and Ruben Parkinson, also known as the Blood Brothers. Uh, Ruben is a former international test rugby player for Japan, and Matua has uh, quite a decorated career himself in rugby, in Māori All Blacks, All Black Sevens, the Blues, uh, quite a bit of super rugby experience, and now uh, these guys reside in the Bay of Plenty and are uh, from the East Coast. So we had a little chat about their rugby today, but also... A little bit more about their upbringing, what made them, I guess, quite abrasive, tough characters in their football and in life after. And we also speak a little bit about uh, the struggles that Ruben in particular went through uh, post-football. And it was quite um, an interesting chat and there's a lot for people to take home with this stuff. And then towards the end, we talk a little bit more about what they're up to now with Blood Brothers. So make sure you check out the description links down below to see exactly what they do these days. Grab yourself a good buzz kombucha, sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of the Raw HQ podcast, Blood Brothers. I know uh, Kepa back here at Raw HQ on the podcast and today I've got a couple of fellas with me um, sort of looked up to uh, in the way of like Māori rugby and that kind of thing for a few years now. Played against Mutz um, a few times. He's, um, he's, I think he's given me a few wee nudges in the head at the bottom of these rucks bro but we'll get to that a little bit later all brother. Right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to get these guys on have a little uh, quoted or a little bit about their background, uh, you know, uh, your younger sort of life with your whānau and where you fellas are from. Also, we'll go into a little bit more depth into your football and then uh, what you fellas are up to now. So, uh, you you boys are East Coast, stay? Eh? No te uri o te whānau apanui. So, yep. we come from down a small place just past the kaha called the Pari Pari. Uh, born and bred down there. There's actually one brother in between myself and Ruben, mm-hmm. um, Kainui, who's, uh, yeah, um, he's one of those fellas that I'll break and build anything, draw anything. Mm. Unfortunately, uh, I know myself, I can't draw a damn thing. So, <laughs> but, yep, so that's where we're from, bro, down the East Coast, yep. born and bred. Um, yeah, migrated this way, migrated south. Yeah, yeah. A bit of concrete. Me. And uh, Rubes, tell me about. Um Growing up with Mutz and uh, your other brother, and and so were your father's uh, parents were they together mm. when, you, when you were mm. being brought up? Yeah, brother. So um, yeah, we had a really, you know, looking back on it, we had a really interesting upbringing. And during that time, we'd have thought it was this. This is where everyone was brought up. But like, uh, so like a little bit, um, you know, something pretty little special for us is that. Uh, we're first cousins to Glenn Osborne, so our mum mm. is an Osborne. Our mum mm. is Glenn's uh, and Uncle Bill Osborne's uh, sister, mm. and so our mum and dad have been together right, you know, from right through our lives. But we we grew up on a like much said on a on a little you know, amazing, beautiful little um, place down on the east coast, and uh, and we sort of we we grew up we grew up with not much, man. Like insane, not much. I mean. Financially, we didn't have a lot of money, but man, we had a uh, we had all the best food that we could eat. You know, we out of the sea and out of the Nahere, mm. and that's where we really got our hunting and fishing and diving and that from. Mm. We had some amazing times together as young fellas, man. We mm. special special times, man, that people won't even believe. But you know, like we broke in horses, you know, we we pig hunt, we we did everything, and the old man was a real he's a tough old bugger mm. on us he was really he was really quite hard mm. but uh we, we you know we loved him to bits and we loved that lifestyle but we got some friggin' stories to talk about if, if you want to go into that brother <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you want to go deep bro? <laughs> yeah, well, thank you, well okay well yeah we might as well touch on it bro like uh i'm quite interested in uh because i know you know you guys are so like tied closely to the land obviously with what you're involved in now um so uh, it's obvious that your old man had a pretty big impression on you uh, mm. wh- what did he do for for mahi no uh, so our dad was a cray fisherman mm-hmm. he had the, the license mm-hmm. down home mm. so he was a cray fisherman by trade um but by nature he was a man of the land he was a pig mm. hunter um, you know, we used we used to go to the bush, and he would leave us up at our punga hut, and he would come out, do the crepots, come back up, or he'd leave us there a couple of days, and we just 
live in eel and hunt and put punga fronds in our hut to live, you know, keep our dry, you know. But yeah, he was a, bro, he was a, um, he was a, in his younger days, he was a shearer. Mm. Uh, he was a fencer. And now and then, myself and Ruby run into old Pakeke crowers that we see around the place. And, oh, no, you're Ruben's young fella. Yeah, yeah, oh, you knew your dad. He was mm. um, apparently pretty handy with his dukes in the pub True. at times. So, um, <laughs> yeah. But our, our pups, he was, a, he, was a, he was hard on us. He was especially hard on Rubes because he was the oldest mm. when we were young. I'm the Portuguese, so I'm the youngest, so mm. I got a lot of way, got away with a lot of things. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I was mum's uh, baby until they found I'd putty putty. But anyway, that's another whole bloody another story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but our, our pups, he was a, that's what he did for a living, bro. And he was just a, a good provider, you know, it mm. was rain, hail or shine, bro. There'll be food on our table. Mm. Now, I, I, I'm not sure where it come from or how it got there, but... There was Kai always on the table, eh? You know, so mm. um, he would hunt, he would do other things. <laughs> uh, <he> starts <laughs> with a P. <laughs> but there would be Kai on our table, eh? Yeah, you yeah. know, um, regardless, you know, yeah. and he was a provider, bro. He was mm. a provider. So, and he taught us always, bro. It was his, his big, his big thing was only take enough for Kai. Mm. Because if you come back tomorrow or your whanau come back tomorrow and there's nothing, who you got to blame? Yeah. So, you know, that's a big thing for myself and Rubes. Mm, yeah, you know, I hear you guys preach about that sort oh, of thing a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah, bro, you know, and you see a lot of people nowadays, they have all this kai lined up, you know, and you're going, yep, yeah, that's cool, but mm. who are you going to give that all to? Are you oh, going right. to put it in the freezer? Uh, Rubes, tell me about um, your first memory, bro, like being taken out to the bush or you know the first time you were, you were taught um, something about hunting or your mm. first memories about that because obviously you fellas have had that from a very very young mm. age and then when you're saying you know you just you got left out there a couple mm. of days at a time so nice just fend for yourself how did that all oh, uh, i got a one distinct memory um my bro and shit, i must have been about 10 my little mate must have been about eight mm. and um and it was one of those times where the old man had to come out to do the pots. He left us up on the in the bush, and it was like pissing down. It was like a real, real bad storm, mm. and um, and we actually we actually got flooded out out of our, our camp, and we had this. Uh, it would have been, it would have been like sort of twelve o'clock at night. We just like soaked, flooded out, and we had an old horse. We hopped on our horse, and we had to like ride, have to ride out. This, like a massive river, mm -hmm. and the river's probably got about eight crossings, and like we had to sort of swim most of them on our on our river, at, and it was like real real late at night, and it was pitch black, um, and it was pretty scary, man. Like it was pretty scary, but like we always sort of had each other, and and we sort of we were scared, but we always felt safe because the old man gave us enough tools, even at that young age, mm. not to panic, how to handle pressure, um, how to look after each other how to have faith in our animal, which was our horse, you know, mm. like, um, and we were really fortunate that our horse sort of took us down this river, pitch black, and within an, a couple of hours later, like, that that um, river was bank to bank, and it was just like one of the biggest floods that ever sort of happened down there, so mm. we only just made it out, which is pretty pretty scary, but, yeah, one of those memorable things you, you asked oh, about, yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, it's a, a, another world to me, bro. Because I'm, uh, I'm not. I wouldn't say like I'm a city boy, but bro, I got no idea about the bush and that kind of thing. And bro, brotherhood. The, the only stuff I know about it is probably the stuff that I watch on your live streams, bro. So wow. it's, it's really interesting for me to hear about this sort of stuff, eh? Hey? Oh, cool, um, cool. You're both tipping the boys, eh? Mm -hmm. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Yep. What age did you go to boarding school? As soon as like uh, intermediate, after straight after intermediate. Um, mm. The old man and the old lady like sent us sent us away to school, and it was purely to give us an an opportunity, bro. Like, mm. you know, the coast is not not much going for for us down there. The schooling, you know, wasn't great. Um, mm. Real limited opportunities, you know. So, um, you know, they sent us away to school, and you know, it wasn't until after we finished school and like like six years later that the our parents finally 
finish paying us paying our school fees off you know mm, it was that yeah. it was that yeah. tough for them to put us up put us through there mm. and it was frig and tough for us to go out, go to school bro like it mm. was like we hadn't frig man we haven't been out we never stayed at anyone else's house apart yeah. from that and we got sent away to school bro it's like real real hard we're like bush people bro <laughs> yeah so it was really hard for us it was it was tough it was a and to sent there, bro, it was school of hard knocks, man. We, yeah. she was. <laughs> As I want to touch on this. Back, back in our days, man, we, mm. were, we had some, we had some yeah. massive fights and some scraps yeah. and some. Because uh, the, the reason I ask about this is, uh, well, obviously St. Stephen's has been shut down now, and mm. um, I, I guess like a part of that was because of how tough it was. You know, obviously with you, the experiences that you fellas had is. As young fellas in the bush there, and what your your dad has taught you and given you, um, were you were you sort of mentally prepared for what was uh, coming into your life when you when you went to boarding school? Because you're still only young fellas. Did you have good memories of? of oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Bro, we've got lifelong friends, mm. you know, brotherhoods. You know, like we we played rugby, we trained, we scrapped, we <laughs> went and borrowed things from people that weren't there, you know, that all of that stuff. So yeah, we yeah. talk about the Tipene Brotherhood, you know, mm. and, and and like you with your mates that you played rugby with, you haven't seen for ages, you can see them and you just pick up that corner mm. straight away. Cheer, brother, how you been? Mean, sweet, mm. you know. So, um, you know, just to pick up on your apartheid to the older bro, because he was out, the oldest, so he went first. Mm. And we would go and visit him and mm -hmm. <laughs> remembering this is us traveling from the coast to Auckland. <laughs> yeah. No rego, no warrant, <laughs> uh, you know, very limited resources, but we would have a truck full of kaimwana mm. that we would take. And now I know the old man would trade it with this and that and we'd get goods on mm. our way there, gas, whatever that yeah, would get us yeah, there. Right. And then we'll get to Tipene with some big boxes of PSC for Rube and his, all his mates. Wicked. So he paved the way for our other brother Kainu, who was next, and me as the youngest coming. So when I got there, it wasn't such a hard transition for me mm. because my older brother was there. Um, but the expectation on me to live up to my older brother's persona was tough because, you know, Rubes was a good rugby player. Mm. He could. And then, oh, are you. As good as your brother, bam, bam. I was about, <laughs> you know, I, I remember weighing in, in my first weigh, weigh in for rugby, and I was uh, thirty seven kgs. Yeah, right. You know, so I was only a little little yeah, fella, yeah, pretty yeah. skinny. Some may call it malnourished but, <laughs> <laughs> from being from down home. You know, so um, yeah, I was only a little fella, but you know, that was, you know, the big the biggest thing was the transition for me was going from. We had no hot water when we grew up. Mm. You know, we grew up on a, you know, people say they leave the door. So I'm proud. Did you grow up, were you born in a tent? I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we lived in a tent, yeah. you know, until miraculous recovery when I burnt it down and <laughs> we got graduated to a, you know, to our uh, caravan and then to a, a garage. So, mm. but you know, we had no running water. We had, we had to put the pipe in from about two k's up the road down from the creek yeah. to our big blue drum that we had that we drunk out of, that we washed out of, so our dogs would drink out of it, you know, we'd wipe the saliva away and have a drink ourselves, brush our teeth, yeah. all that kind of thing, you know. So going to school, getting hot water on the face, you know, it was a bit of a shock to the system to this day, and I know Rube does it too. The old Winhoff, bro, he got nothing, bro. We still have, <laughs> we still have cold showers now, you know. Still have cold showers. Yeah, still have yeah. cold showers, bro, because it just... <laughs> Our dad used to say, I don't, you know, there was no mucking around in the shower, bro. It was no. jumping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, right. Wash the balls, you're up. Oh, but, yeah. You know, yeah. funny thing is that, um, bro, like, uh, you know, like, Tipini was a school of hard knocks, bro. Mm. It was tough. Mm. But the lifestyle we came out of, like, it was a walk in the park, brother. Yeah, like, you know, like, yeah, this bro. family, these older, um, when we got there as juniors and these uh, old, older seniors, you know, like, they were, They'll put all the juniors, you know, one uh, an example, they'll put all the juniors and they'll just like, they'll just like, you know, mentally just try and really stuff up the kids. Mm. You know, like, we grew up with the old man, bro. This is like, these, 
you guys can't do anything to no, us, boys, yeah. you know, like we just did their shit, like, you know, it's like yeah. we all good, man, you know. And yeah. so, you know, there was like towny kids beside us crying and breaking down, yeah. I'm going to leave. I was like, this is this nothing, is bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, brother. I don't know, what are you up to? You know, you three squares a day just line up for food. <laughs> yeah. Fucking mean. Every month and people are complaining about, oh, that's not enough. Fuck, that's heat, bro. You've got yeah. bread even, you know. So. Uh, no, that's awesome, bro. That's, such a, I, that's what I was getting at, bro. I just, I, I felt like a, that sort of upbringing that you had really set you up pretty well for deep in it, no matter how mm. hard it was, mm. you know. Mm. So, you know, you spoke about Mats uh, Ruben sort of having um, sort of big boots to fill when you rocked mm. up to school, particularly in the way of uh, football. So, uh, how young were you fellas when you started playing rugby? Oh, bro. Fuck. How young? Young? Oh, yeah. Chris, real little. Mm. <laughs> the, yeah. um, uh, the thing with the old man, like... Um, he he saw rugby for us as a way out, out of a way to be successful. He because he didn't sort of know any other any any other way. So he started us. He started us tally, tacking, tackling tackle uh, um, tractor tires like when we were real yeah real, right real young bro like yeah young. yeah like I mean young like you know yeah, yeah. five yeah, six yeah, like yeah, yeah. roll them. There was a big slope over at our just out of our place up the hill. Mm. He used to be at the top. Hey, you know. Fucking get out of there, stand there and roll them. Yeah. Now, and if you got to, what the fuck did you get? You know, no, you know, there's no qualms about bring that fucking thing back up here, stand in front of it and tackle it. Yeah. You tackled them, you know, and yeah. like, it wasn't wicked. Yeah, you know, so it was. And he, I think, you know, he was, his thoughts were before the time, like he knew someday in the near future there was going to be professional rugby. Yeah, yeah. And if there was, you boys are going to be ready to play it. Yeah. You know, and I don't know, you know, that that was his Fakaro and mm. you know, we're we're super lucky, bro, that in that, you know, I measured everyone against my old man, bro. Not not many stacked up in in regards to how tough are you, you know, fuck. Can you carry a big borak out of a out of a you know, at night? Because our dad, bro, we caught pigs in some pretty hospitable places, bro, mm. and he Fuck, I used to marvel at him, bro. He would climb with the big ball all the way for hours and would be in tow. And because we didn't have torches or headlamps and that back in the day, bro. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, you just, you just, yeah, here's a crackle, you fucking climb, <laughs> scramble, scramble. <laughs> oh, yeah. See someone, you know, and no fancy hunting gear, bro. It was just what you were in, just yeah. layers upon layers. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, and you hear a horse call out up, up above, so, oh, yeah, fucking head that way, head to our horses, you know, so it was... Well, unreal, bro. Oh, it was, un it was unreal. Now that we think about it, now we think, you know, we live in these beautiful houses that mm. have nice running water and our <laughs> wives are complaining about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> you know, you know what? There's one thing what uh, what really brings to our life, brother, and it's like, uh, like gratitude and, mm -hmm. um, you know, like... Uh, been appreciative of, of the little things mm. and we still really carry that nowadays <coughs> eh, brother we ne don't take anything for granted yeah. you know we've had some amazing opportunities in our lives and we but we've really really appreciated them man you know we haven't just like oh you know that's just helps we've always like and made the most of it eh? mm. do you think uh you know with, with your with your kids when you're put through difficult sort of environments or situations when you're mm. younger like you know, in your father's case, obviously it builds you into a stronger person. Some people can go the other way, can can, mm. can push you down like a, a different sort of avenue. Mm. But it's hard to replicate for, I guess, for uh, kids and stuff these days, these mm. hard situations without breaking them. But also, you, we always want our kids to, to grow up mm. strong and that mm. sort of thing. So what are your father's thoughts on the difference between mm. your kids' um, like uh, upbringing now mm. to, to how yours is? I totally agree with you, bro, and it's happened. It's happened, eh? So, you know, all we want is to, our kids to have a better opportunity and to have a better life than what we have. Mm. So we try and give them the, the, a better life and a life that they didn't have to have struggle like we did. Mm. But then that's not doing them any good, you know? Mm. So you, you, you give them everything that you didn't have, and then they sort of don't... You know, like they've grown up a different person to what we yeah. are, bro. You know, it's like really, really tough. Mm. And it's, it's quite, you know, like... 
um, we sort of we teach them every what well, you know we both teach our our boys and our and our children everything we can what we've learned from our old man, mm. but we're never ever going to replicate how we had it, and mm. they're never ever going to be like we are, mm. and and it's sort of shown nowadays, man. Like you know we really want them to be, but they're not, and that's just the way it is, man. You know, mm. it's just the way it is. Yeah. Mm. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rubes, were you so as soon as you got on the scene at Tipani, were you one of the star footy players there? Um, was it pretty early no, on not, that thing? Not you? initially, eh, bro. No. No, not initially. I, I, um, I, I wasn't. I was never. I was never outstanding. I was never sort of anything um, special in my sort of first few years. Yeah. But I really, really worked hard, bro. Like I, mm. I just really, I had a really good work ethic, and I really wanted to, wanted to be one of the better rugby players at, at St. Stephen's and um, prior to me going there, there were some really awesome players there, bro, like mm. really good players come out of tip. Mm. Um, I, yeah, bro, and, I, and, and fortunately, like I did become one of the sort of the, the better players out of tip mm. and it was just because I, I just had a real a real passion, a real desire. I, I knew I wasn't um, cut out to, to be an intellectual Mm. And I thought, well, this is my thing, thinking about what the old man impressed on us. Like, one day this is going to be a professional sport and you can make a living from this. Mm. And I like, I stored that away and I'm like, man, I'm just going to put extra into, really put extra into what I did. And my bigger, biggest thing back then, bro, is like I loved Michael Jones. Yeah, and right. I just like, he was my, he was my thing. He was like, and so I just like imitated him, done everything he did, man. And it's like, oh, I was to a certain extent at that level, like I could sort of like be like him in a mm. little bit, you know? Mm. And and I was a, on that note, I was, I was an open side flanker back then. Mm. I was played flanker. Yeah. And I ended up having a really good career at, at St. Stephen's, bro. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, and what about yourself, Mats? How long did it take for the 37 kilo boy to, to turn into one of the guns there? At yeah, but it was so Rube followed Michael Jones, I followed Rube. Right. Hey, so mm. I always want to be like my big brother. Mm. Being 37 kgs, I wasn't going to be a flanker. So I started <laughs> playing halfback because yeah, that's yeah. where the little fella played. Yeah, yeah. So that I graduated my skills, you know, and like. Thinking back now, our dad used to make us do weights when I was probably 10, 12, Time Mitchell age. Yeah, so I right. played four years of Time Mitchell yeah. because I was so little. But he had me, you know, from a ground pass, boof, mm. this side, that side. Yeah, you're weak on this side, pass, pass. Mm. With the weights, you know, in your mm. hands, so mm. dumbbell, dumbbell. You know, yep, do 50 that side, do 50 that side. You know, so. The bro was pretty ahead of his time, man. Eh? Oh, bro, he was like... Yeah, he was, bro. He, he was, was. He was, yeah, he was well ahead of his time mm. in regards to, you know, building strength and capacity. Yeah. And, like, we had a time Mitchell training camp one time down at the local marae. We used to run from Takaha all the way down the beach, which would take us probably 40 minutes an hour, swim the river up to the, to the marae, do weights, like... Pullovers, squats, bench press, deadlifts, you know, yeah. for half an hour. Then we had breakfast and it was porridge and bananas, you know. Yeah. So we had, I don't know, he had, I don't know if he had an idea of what they were, but he knew bananas were good for you and porridge was good for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah eat heaps of that, heaps of that, you're good, you know. <laughs> <kind of thing. laughs> Sorry, I went way off the topic there, no, brother, no, but no, you're getting back to tipping in. No, I just, I just wanted to be like my big bro, mm. you know, growing up. Um, and it was, for me, rugby was uh, rugby was enjoyment. Rugby was mm. fuck massive. Don't have to sit down and you know listen. Yes. You know, just fuck grab the ball and run. And mm. and coming from our background, we had a almost like a head start on everyone else. But being so small, our dad said, "You fellas have to gonna get on the tin and get you know." Mm get some strength around your neck so when you tackle you don't get injured mm -hmm. you know and all of that kind of stuff so third fourth form I started doing weights fifth form you know started doing some more weights and he was all about squats because that's your whole body he said mm. don't dodge squats squats is your main exercise squats bench press and pullovers yeah. you know he used to make us do heads of pullovers yeah, and right. that slips up your ribcage yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it deformed my ribcage now but we used to do pullovers galore man and squats and bench press yeah. you know and that's those were the three main ones 
and a bit of deadlift here and there. But those mm. were our those that was our repertoire we used to go yeah, to, bro. you know, and we stuck yep. to that. You know, and then as I got older, yeah, you know, I didn't bloom into a a good rugby player until I was yeah later on in my mm. in my years because I was always little and I tell my sons now don't worry about you know about if you don't make it when you're at school bro just keep keep your work ethic up and keep yeah. trying and keep going hard and you know you'll get there you'll get there you just got to keep at it right eh? yeah mm. so uh, does that sort of work ethic that you fellas obviously both possess did that also come from you know the days in the bush and, and that kind of thing does that all come from your old men as well uh, I, I really think Ava is a, like a balance like what we've sort of forgotten to mention is our old lady mm. but our old lady like she was mm. uh, she had a different kind of work ethic she, ethic baby she was like really consistent and she would always turn up onto her mm. job she would always work a solid day's work she was a school teacher mm. you know like and, and, and I, I reckon I've like I really I've really learned how to her kind of work ethic you know just that consistency um, day in day out um, you know, and like, and I think you know, like we are, we are massive a lot to the old lady. Mm-hmm. Like she brought a unbelievable balance into into our lives, bro. That um, if she wasn't around, um, oh. Lord knows, bro. You know, like honestly, we could be, I don't know, bro. We could be prisons of the headhunters now. You know, it could have mm-hmm. went that way for us because mm-hmm. the old man was so so tough. Yeah. So she brought that that yin and the yang to our. Yeah. Our family, yeah. um, and she she bought that that sort of grounding, that grounding, and like the old man to you know like take it easy, you know like that's mm. probably yeah you've gone this far, gone that far, but don't go overboard, you know because you'll you'll mess the boys up or something like that. Mm. So um, she was really really <laughs> special, bro, and like really yeah. special in our yeah. lives, and mm. obviously still is to to this day. Eh? Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, uh, let's talk about uh, post high school football. So t- t- Tell me a little bit about um, both of your guys' journey into uh, how long did it take once you finished school, uh, finish up at school, to get into like these representative teams that you fellows were part of? Yeah, I, I sort of came out of school like um, I already had a bit of a head start. I, I was like uh, New Zealand school, so I came out of school mm. with a little bit of like you know. So we were, uh, me and a good friend Dion Mill, we came we mm. came here. Um, and we did a polytech course here, and I um, I played a, I played a little bit for the Bay Colts straight off, like straight out of school. Mm. Played for Arutaki was our first club, mm-hmm. um, and then I sort of uh, didn't do that much. Didn't do that much. I um, and then I went to Otago, um, and that's where yeah. things sort of took off for me. I, I went down to Otago, and, and yeah, started going well there. Right? Yeah. And what about yourself, Mitch? Yeah, well. Of course, Ruby was here. I didn't go all the way past to the coast. I stopped here. Yeah. Um, and I I finished my schooling, bro, and I I was working for a furniture removal company down the road here, Crown Worldwide Removal. Yeah, right. And someone walked into the warehouse and said, oh, who wants to go to Auckland? And being a sort of cocky young bug I was, yep. You know, before, <laughs> you know, I knew any information about it. Yeah. So that's how you end up at North Harbour, is it? Yeah, so they said, oh, you know, you'll go up to North, uh, go up to Auckland. I thought it was Auckland, but then they said, oh, the, the branch is over North Harbour. Oh, and okay. I said, oh, my cousin's over there, Glenn Osborne. I said, oh, yeah, sweet, I'll yeah. bunk up with the old cousin. Yeah. So I stayed with him, um, yeah, and started playing some sevens and went to a trip in Adelaide. Mm. Went over there and then got approached to play for the Bulldogs Rugby League. Yeah. When I come right. back. So, That's right. Yeah, I went and spent four years in Aussie playing Super League, yep. Rugby League for the Bulldogs. Yeah. it was... Um, but what was that? Tell me, bro, because I, I, everyone in New Zealand, I think, well, majority of people remember you as the the, bro, the blues with the big dreads yeah. and um, like Māori All Blacks and that kind of thing. But I, I think the, your, your rugby league story gets like forgotten a little bit, bro. So uh, tell me about that, those few years. Yeah, it was, bro, it was... Put it this way, brother. I went into this meeting, um, thought I dodged the bullet. You know, th- there was all the executive board from Canary Bankstown was sitting there, suit and ties. I was there on a Sunday morning. I played a game before, so considerably under the weather. <laughs> um, yeah, right. You know, you know how it is. And, you know, trying to hold it together, yeah. asking me all these like 
questions like how much you think you're worth, um, all of these, and I'm, ah, I'm going, you know, and yeah. I'm just dropping out, you know, oh, you know, well, you know, think, see how we go, <laughs> kind of, you know, <laughs> thinking I'm dodging bullets. Um, and they go, oh, yeah, okay, Matua, you're off this afternoon at 3 o'clock, here's your plane ticket, tell whoever you're living with at the moment, you'll see them in uh, uh, three or four months, and I'm going, ah. So my girlfriend at the time, my wife now, mm. bah, I went back and said, bah, I'm off I'm off to play um, rugby league this afternoon, love, so yeah. you have to move out of our flat and all that. Shot over, hopped off the plane, went to the ground, got introduced to all the boys, then got taken outside, got a skin test, beep test, decrement test, went in the gym, did all the weight tests, got told I was a bit of a chubby little bugger. <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll see how you go. So, and then I, ah, I trained for three months without touching a ball, oh. five o'clock, 12 o'clock, five o'clock every day and just got thrashed, True. just got thrashed, just got drilled. And I didn't know at the time, but there was a couple of South African fellas with me who were living in the same house with me, we were good mates that I thought were on contract, but we were actually vying for that one contract. Mm. And the reason I got it was, and you know yourself and Ruby, when you're training hard, that little thing on your shoulder, oh, your ankle's a bit sore, you can stop <laughs> now, you know, yeah. your calf's tightening yeah, up, yeah, you know. Yeah. And, I, and I, there's that one little thing that our dad told us when we were young fellas, bro. He said, if a job's worth doing, make sure you do it fucking properly. Mm. You know, if you're going to run, go for a fucking run. Run hard, run as long as you can. So, mm. and I, I held on to that little bit of a fuckatoki mm. in those training, in those dark times. And I was thinking, fuck, I've just got to keep going, keep going. You know, and these South African boys were pulling out, you mm. know, and then they called us up to the office. They called me up two weeks later. Okay, here's your contract. Those other two boys are gone. You can stick it out. I was going, oh, fuck, I didn't even know I was going against them. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, and then, yeah, really enjoyed my time over there, brother. Enjoyed Sydney, enjoyed living out Cronulla, surfing, playing rugby league, um, you know, all of the things that come with it. Yeah. Rubes was in the Highlanders at the time. He came yeah. over for a trip one time. Fire, I was out the gate. <laughs> you know, just, I used to kick around with Solomon Hamono and oh, true. Yeah, all those boys. You know, bro, fire. He was a hitter, bro. Oh, bro. Holy. He can box too, bro. Oh, true. <laughs> bro, watching them boxing oh. training because, you know, they were it was ruthless, bro. They would just make the circle on the field. Yeah, put your gloves on. Yeah, Matsu, you in. Jace, you're in. You just go for two minutes, yeah. rumble, and then someone will hop out, and then a fresh guy will hop in and just give you a hiding for two minutes. Yeah, you're yeah. trying to fight, then you'll hop out, someone will hop in and flog him. You know, so, bro, bro it was just tough because Billy Johnson was our trainer back then, and he was just duke it up. You yeah. know, he just Queensland trainer. Mm. So he was just, bro, duke it up all the time. So we used to just have big, not, yeah, just big rumbles. Yeah, balls. yeah. For fitness, so <laughs> it was crazy. It was oh, crazy stuff, but uh, rugby league. Eh? Oh, rugby league. So yeah, I played, <clears throat> really enjoyed my time uh, with the Bulldogs. Mm. Yeah, they're still following to this day. There, obviously not doing that well. <laughs> yeah, not, at the not moment, too, eh? not yeah, need not, a few more rumbles here. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, the old games change, day. Eh? The old yeah, games change. Yeah. So. Oh, hard for yeah. both codes, brother. Yeah. Um, Rubes, tell me about Otago and then uh, Highlanders, bro, because so obviously everything started to take off there in um, early days in Super Rugby back then. So yeah. what was that like, bro? Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, so when I when I went down, um, yeah, I, I had a couple of – I had a real <coughs> bad injury, um, had an op. I was out of rugby for nearly two years. And then I um, – yeah, he sort of came back um, – and I and I got into the the Otago team in 1996. Mm. Um, really, really sort of really special type of rugby type of player down there. Mm. Um, it suit, really, really suited uh, my sort of values and beliefs. It was like everything we did a hundred percent. We trained our asses off. We drank a lot of piss. We mm. drank hard. We partied hard. It was just everything was hundred mm. percent. Um, and one of the special times of my life is uh, winning a championship, uh, NPC championship yep. in 1998. Yep. Um, 
and we had a real we had an awesome team man and we uh yeah we yeah we we won we won that and in actual fact a couple of years ago we had a, a 20 year reunion yeah. and so all the boys got together back down in Dunedin and with special times man you know like I mean it can't be special for Canterbury because they win them every year but yeah. <laughs> for, yeah, yeah, for yeah. Otago yeah. bro you know yeah. like, that's only one we've ever won you know mm. oh, no, sorry not ever won but the last time we won it so it's really really special for us mm. but um, just really uh, my memories about it just really good people man you know like mm. and I sort of um you know, and I was in the lights. So we had in that '98 team. I think we ended up having 16 internationals when we went back. Yeah. So we had like a lot of All Blacks. We had um, a couple of boys play for Scotland, mm. and then myself from Japan. So mm. Japanese. Um, but we had a we had a, you know like a lot of really good players, bro. And yeah. back then, they saw the times when the All Blacks used to always play all those yeah those NPC games. So yeah. it made it even even more special that's mm. when you've got massive crowds for the mm. games that's when um, the be- all the young players tested themselves against the All Blacks All Blacks had to prove their worth to go to the next level you know mm. so it was uh, now special times mate yeah. awesome and uh, so is that you went to Senex eh? Senex after yeah 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 so um, yeah, it was it was a really really tough decision for me bro like uh I got told by uh, Laurie Maines, who was a All Blacks coach the year before. Mm. He was, a, and he goes, you know, like you're this close to maybe coming on tour. I was going to take mm. you on tour, and mm. um, and it was a tough decision uh, for me because you know, like it said, it said, oh, do you do you chase that the black jersey or do you like? You know, like a bird in the in the hand. So oh, I just had a new baby, a little boy, mm. and an opportunity come. Uh, to go to Japan and and for me, fuck, I'm not gonna bullshit. It was about the coin, bro. Like yeah, I yeah. needed, I needed to make sure my family was gonna be secure. Of course, yeah. And apart from that whole thing about, oh, you know, love new language and food, and you know that that was obviously that that was awesome. But I went to Sanux and and when I first went there, Jamie Joseph and Graham Basher were the other players there. Mm. So it was really uh, really cool playing with those boys that are the legends of the game. Mm. And yeah, yeah, Japan was a. We ended up doing six years over there and yeah. played played in a World Cup. And yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. So Wicked real out. special times, brother. Bro, did you go to Senex as well? Did yeah, you go to Japan? yeah, today? I did. So I was I was here, and I was. Did Rube actually... tell you how much he was getting paid? Or <laughs> yeah, to... pretty much. Bro. <laughs> I was here slogging it away. I was um, I was the actual. I was captain in New Zealand Sevens at the time. Mm. Rube's rung me up. Bro, one of the boys has got an injury. They need a cover. Come over to be a year contract. Come over and have a jam. Mm. And I'd heard all about it. And I thought, fuck, man. You know, yeah, fuck it. Why not? Mm. I was always one. I was always one of those fellas that, ah, oh, fuck, just spur of the moment. Yeah, fuck, I have a crack. Yeah, you know, kind yeah. of a thing. Not too much thought process went into it. Yeah. You know, went to my girlfriend at the time. Shit, we need to get married. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we need to go to the registry office. Got married there. Fuck, it was away, kind yeah. of a thing. Mm. We were supposed to be going to a fitness testing for sevens. <laughs> fuck, I turned up, said, Titch, I'm not fucking doing it. <laughs> Why not? I'm fucking going to Japan. <laughs> he goes, hey, what, is, you, what, what, are you, what are you fucking thinking? What are you doing? <laughs> You're the fucking captain. <laughs> said, ah, brother. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and he was fucking, he was always having a heart attack. Eh? He was, oh, fuck, what were all the boys saying when it was all going? Fuck! Okay, you think cars? If I've done my uh, thing, bro. <laughs> that's enough. Fucking forty twenty. So. Yeah, bro, I'm out. I'm out. Fuck, stick that fucking eighty sixty forty up your ass. Um, oh, yeah, bro, and we went over um, to Sunnix, and it was, it was. It was a home away from home, bro. It was unbelievable because there was Rubes was there, my older brother Dion Muir, Hari Makere, Damien Corona, mm-hmm. and we had oh, and we had a New Zealand coach and a New Zealand trainer. Yeah, right. and our trainer was from North Harbour. I can't remember his name. I don't have my brother, <laughs> but it was just like 
Bro, it was awesome because our crew, wives eh? got on together. Yeah. We traveled in one car after training every day. We would play tractor. You know, we had a CC club on a Wednesday night. You know, just <laughs> real good things. And, and it was awesome because uh, money wasn't a problem. Mm. You know, we had fucking, we had mean big apartments and we would have visiting teams and all the guys and all the yeah, followers would yeah, come and up. say fuck you fellas got mean apartments bro you know because they were stuck in little boxes we were bro that's what I, I was in a house like this bro and i was over there yeah well, <laughs> well, see, I had the three kids running around <laughs> fuck i'm going home <laughs> and, and and that's why a lot of players didn't like that experience mm. whereas mm. we had a really good bro and and that was set up from rubes and jamie and those players mm. that he mentioned before that come from down south with that um uh, with their ways of bro you play hard you drink hard and all the mm. japanese boys bro they indulged in a beer mm. and they loved it they were shit on the piss but yeah. fuck, they were good times and we had uh <laughs> but we had just yeah we had awesome time it was an awesome mm. experience bro. And we funny enough me and my wife and my oldest son who was a young boy at the time we were googling mapping where we lived and oh bro look this way right down to the you know this and that sort of mm. stuff so it was it was good fun bro i really enjoyed it yeah really yeah. enjoyed it yeah bro, tell us about that uh world cup experience bro mm. um yeah it was it, it's uh it's really really uh special to go to world cup but mm. um you know it's a little bit like or it's just like oh it's only japan you know but you know, when you sort of, when you represent a, a country that's as passionate as Japan, then it doesn't just become just Japan, you know? Mm. So, um, and I was like, um, you know, like I had bought into the whole thing, man. Like Japan had given me the opportunity and, and given my family a, a, an amazing life. And I, this was my my way of repaying them for that, yes. you know? Yeah. So I bought into it 100%, bro. Like um, um, like I, I learned, I learned the... Um, the national anthem, mm. the Japanese national anthem, and I was into it big time. I loved the Japanese food, mm. and um, really, really sort of when you when you go as a Japan team, a Japanese team, uh, into hotels, they'll they'll um, they'll have their own chefs in there, and they'll clean the hotel out, and it'll be just authentic Japanese food, like mm. um, you know, like vegetables and that for breakfast and, mm, yeah, and, rice yeah. and raw egg and yeah. that kind of thing eh? and I, but I, I loved it eh? mm. um, I think uh, what's really cool about uh, World Cups is what they what they do is that they, they'll put a team into a into a town and then a that town adopts that team yeah you know so although we're just Japan um, the Japanese team the whole of Townsville adopted us, and they all the uh, shops, you know, had all their um, kimono and all that kind of thing, oh, and all yeah, the yeah, all the um, locals dressed up in Japanese stuff, and they played all that. I think I'm turning Japanese, you know, <laughs> all of that, all of Fuck, that kind of those Aussie drunk <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, well, they, well, they were, you know, yeah. and that was really, really special because. Uh, the Japanese boys uh, aren't great tourists. Like they're re they're world beaters in in Japan. Yes. As soon as yeah. you take them out of the environment, they really really struggle. Mm. So um, although you know we, I don't, th oh, I think we won one game. Mm. Um, they 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 perform really. They did really well. Because um, I've toured with Japan around the sort of yeah. world and that, and they really they really do struggle, bro. Because they just hate being out of the environment. Mm. But yeah, you know, um, you yeah, once again like, um, um, yeah, just just amazing, amazing experience, bro. Just to go to a World Cup and even, mm -hmm. you know, and just uh, like we've all done, bro, you know, those special times you have, and that camaraderie and that bond bonding of uh, of other team members and that. Mm. Yeah, just really memorable. Yeah, bro. Just, that's what it's all about. Eh? Mm, mm. When you fellas, uh, like I, I know you fellas got a lot lot more stories and a lot more to talk about in terms of your football stuff but at the end of your professional rugby careers talk to us about what direction you fellas go from there uh, like we talked about your mahi a little bit just before and then obviously Mats has done a fair bit of media stuff so uh maybe we'll, we'll start with you bro what uh, yeah. what, what got you into like the, the tv and uh, all oh. that sort of stuff so so that was um before the the media bro Rubes 
to my fuck to my saving, Rubes brought a pub just down the road here. Oh, cream bar, cream, cream bar, bar. Yeah, bro, yeah. And he said, "Here, you run this. We know, you know, we know what we like in a bar, and we set it up." I'm like, fuck yeah, okay. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah. And then him and him and some mates went to Papamore Tavern, and they did that one. So mm. I was sort of down here, the cream bar and the mount. And we run run there for seven eight years. True, okay. And it was fucking awesome. Yeah. And during that time, another good mate of ours, Bailey Mackey, said, "Much, I'm starting a new show called Code. Do you want to come and do this?" And I said, "Oh yeah, you know, it was like one of those opportunities." You know, yeah, fuck, I'll do that. Never been on TV before in my life. Yeah, bro, I'll be sweet. You know, yeah, kind of yeah. Thing. Jumped on there, and I sort of not fell into media, but that's my first lead into media, and it was. Uh, the first year was all scripted kind of stuff. Mm. And I was saying to the bro, bro, fuck. Because I'm dyslexic and I can't, I can't, like, I can't read. Like, if I read that stuff, I'll just miss shit out. Yeah, and yeah. I'm just going, oh, bro, it's, you know. And, uh, yeah, I'm terrible at that. So I'm yeah. bad with scripts. The off the cuff. Really yeah, sweet, give eh? me the off yeah. the cuff, bro. Sweet. I'll talk rubbish all day. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that's how I fell into the media. And, yeah, I've, I really enjoyed that. That environment, but it was the yeah. I just I just and it was like Rube said. I was appreciative of you know all of the stuff that was coming my way. Mm. Um, but coming out of professional rugby, I wish that I had been someone had have told me, <laughs> bro, the monthly check's gonna stop. Yeah. When yeah. you finish, you need to set yourself up while you're doing your professional rugby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether it be a trade, whether it be something, so you don't have to go you know, be the funny guy all the time. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Because I sort of set myself up as that. And right. whilst I'm a quite a hard case chap, yeah. sometimes you don't like fucking people, hey, my dad, fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, attach, yeah. It, attach that sort of identity to you. Yeah. And it's not yeah. that 24-7. I know what you mean, bro. Yeah, so, but, you know, that's what it is. And, you know, fell into that media stuff and lucky got, you know, some good gigs on the way. And, yeah. Yeah, it was just appreciative of having an opportunity. You mm. know, sometimes like what I'm known for is not think about the consequences at the time, but yeah, yeah I'll do that, bro. Oh, yeah. shit, how do you do that? Yeah. I don't know, we'll figure it out as we go kind of thing. So. Yeah, bro. Right. Yeah, that was. Uh, for, for me, eh, bro, like this this part of my, my life where we just come on to is like um, – Probably the the hardest part I've ever been through. Mm-hmm. I came out of I came out of um, a professional rugby player, and I had a I had a bit of coin, and I, I had no no real support systems around me, no real advice on how to handle financially. Mm. I fucking wasted a lot of money, bro. I bought all the toys, mm. like the sixty four fucking Impala, the Cadillac Escalade. <laughs> mm. I had uh, the Holden Commodore. I had all the toys, bro, because. I, I didn't have any um, support around me, bro. And mm. I, I, to cut a long story short, man, I invested a lot of money and fuck, I probably lost about 700 grand. I, uh, I hit rock bottom mm. uh, in, in, my, in, my, in that part of my life. I, I fuck nearly lost my wife and my family. I mm. just, I was, I, I'd worked so hard to become someone that I ended up like fucking not liking that person, you know, mm-hmm. like, and, uh, and it was like, um, it was almost like someone upstairs and it could have been the old man saying, fuck, it's time for you to pull your head in, man, and mm-hmm. like, and eat some humble pie, you know, like, like I thought I was 30 cent, bro, I thought I was a man, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, and I went through some real, real tough times, brother, like I fucking hit rock bottom, um, so tell us about that, bro. If you if you want to have a little quarter uh, about that, what yeah, what, um, what was this little what well what was this big moment that you realised yeah. fuck I got to turn turn this stuff around and um it wasn't one it wasn't one little thing I think fuck I hit, I hit a, a point where I was like fucking I mean like it was like fuck man like it was worth me you know like hanging in here you know it's like fuck mm. this you know mm. and I thought well. I didn't come through that life that we just talked about with the old man to to wave the white flag. Eh? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and then it was a lot of like a, a lot of like a shame and embarrassment, you know, that I've sort of, you know, I hit I hit this part of my life, and, and you know what it's like, bro. Fucking Kiwis, they 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 love pulling a man down, you know. Mm. They they love that 
get back here. Who do you think you are? You know. Yeah. And so I went through that, bro, and it was um. But was it like, you know, looking back, fuck it, that time was really, really tough. Um, but, bro, you know, like, I, I'd never take it back, man. Like, it made me a, a heaps better person. Mm. Like, I'm fucking a better dad. I'm a better husband. I'm, mm. a, I'm a better man, bro, mm. because I went through that. Mm. I think if I hadn't gone through that, um, something really, really bad would have happened to me or mm. I would have done something really, really bad to someone else, you know, because mm. I just... I just thought I was invincible, bro, and I had heaps of fucking coin. I thought I was a man. Yeah. All that bullshit, eh, bro? Mm. Like, all that rubbish shit. So, um... And were you sort of going through all this with the bro uh, at, uh, at this time, or...? I was on the peripheral of this, because I was... Mm. I was fighting my own... Like, not fighting physically, but I was trying to look after my own family yes. and fucking run a pub and do all of this stuff as well, and I'd sort of catch up with the bro, fuck, and it wasn't, bro, how you doing, it was, fuck, how's the business doing, you know, it's yeah, a fucking yeah, sort yeah. of float. Not talking about the personal side yeah, of things. Yeah, so it wasn't, yeah. you know, until the bro rang me one day, fuck, I'm in the shit, I was like, fuck, fucking hell, what's going on? Mm. And then we had a conversation, I said, yeah, okay, fuck, we need to do something about it, you know, I'll give mm. you a hand, bro, because mm. anytime he asks me, you know, fuck, and I'll yes. ask him, bro, yeah, sweet, well, yeah, we'll do whatever. Yeah. And then, you know, still not thinking that, you know, I'm still in my own little fucking world at the moment, you know, not thinking, oh, I think, fuck, the bro's all good, he's fucking got everything sorted, you know, because that was my perception of my older brother. Mm. Yep, fuck, he's got everything sweet, mm. yeah, I'll just follow his lead, fucking mm. sweet as shit, it's a fan. How do I fucking do this? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Because that's what I did it all my life. Yeah, bro. And yeah, did him, you know, and he's fucking, like he says, bro, and I've seen the change in him, and he's, and he has changed his way, which has changed my way, because um, I was fucking, I was a fucking wank sometimes mm -hmm. in public, uh, on the piss, you know. Uh, and you look back and think, fuck, what are you being a fucking wanker for? Mm. You know, what the fuck? You come from humble beginnings, be a humble cunt, be a good cunt. Mm. Everyone likes a good fella, mm. no one likes a fucking cock, mm -hmm. you know? And that's why we try and teach our sons, bro, it doesn't matter where you are or who you're talking to, bro, just be a good dude. Just be a good dude, bro, you know, be a good, be a good person first and foremost, you know? Yeah. So, you know, that's, you know, Coming out of that and, you know, the the bro showing the way, paving the way or showing the way forward, you know, it's become heaps better. Like, you know, there's heaps of things that you could want to go back and change, but we wouldn't change them because mm. that's how you become the person you are. Of course. Uh, there's some things I would like to change in rugby and rugby terms. I've done some things that I'm not proud of, but that... My excuse, and it's a pretty poor one to be fair, was, fuck, that's how the old man taught us. Yeah. You know, it was, when you cross that white line, I don't give a fuck who you're playing, mm. you're going to fucking win. Yeah. And yeah. it was, and that's what it was for us, you know. We, I, I didn't care. Fuck, I could be playing him. I could be playing my fucking cousin. I don't give a fuck, bro. Mm. I'll punch your fucking head. I'll stand mm. on you. I'll fucking do what it takes to win the game. And that was kind of detrimental to... You know our rugby careers or my rugby career. Uh, Mats, you're, you're just talking to us about the way that you approach the game, mm. and it's uh, win at all costs. Or um, you, know, you 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 play a, <clears throat> a very abrasive sort of sort of game, and particularly like around even Bay of Plenty rugby, bro. Like you're very well known for how hard you you play the game and. Well, being I, a dirty cunt, you'd say well, that. Yeah, you know, that, that too, bro. But I think, like, but there's a like a respect that comes with it. T talk to us about, uh, you know, and I assume you, you had the same sort of mindset with with your game as well, Rubes. But is it just that uh, you just wanted to just fucking dominate everybody that you're playing against? Is that is that what was that, in your mind all the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a part of it, and that was um, that was due to our upbringing. It was fucking 
it was don't waste my fucking time driving all the way from the coast and yeah. get out here and fucking be a little pussy. <clears throat> get on there and fucking hoe into it. So mm. my interpretation was that I was like, older fuck, I've got to fucking, every time I step foot on that field, I'm fucking, I'm winning. Mm, mm. doesn't matter what it takes. Um, and looking back, you know, there were some instances, and, and and to be fair, I wasn't the biggest player, I wasn't ever the fastest player, but I knew I could bring fucking some physicality, some mm. contact, some fuck, however, to intimidate someone to do something so they didn't play well. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, mm. That kind of stuff. Fuck. And unfortunately, a lot of people watch a game of rugby and they judge you on what's happening on the field. And, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and like, fuck off the field, I'm not that person. You yeah. know, I'm just, you know, consider myself quite a jovial character that loves yeah, having yeah. a sociable dude that, you know, gets on with anyone. But, to, you know, uh, when we're talking about how you fellas have started to think a little bit more over the years about being better, better fellas, uh, you know, it, has that... Are you saying that, like the way that you played the game, sort of transferred outside the field sometimes in terms of, like, the way you approach life as well? Is is am yeah. I reading that right? W- would that be a correct statement? Yeah, that, that, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think that, that's correct, bro. Um, Historically, I don't mean anymore. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, um, I think I think to a certain extent we didn't understand how to how to how to divide the two, mm-hmm. so. Um, and I and I sort of I was I was never like the little bro because I couldn't fight as good as him, so I didn't, <laughs> didn't start any of those. <laughs> but uh, and, uh, like I, I, I still uh, did try to tackle and try to try to kill people, and I tackled yeah. sometimes second best and hurt my own self, you know. Mm. But it was just that mindset, just just wanted to dominate people. Mm. Um, and then I and then I, you know, sort of sometimes yeah. I remember back and you come off the field and you sort of um, carry that sort of like, you know, like wouldn't take any shit, you know, and like mm. people didn't sort of sometimes or didn't know if you didn't, they were just joking with you and all that, but you'd sort of take it the wrong way and at night on, on the person. Mm. Um, and then there's a lot of, for me, there was, I felt there's, looking back, there's a lot of arrogance, you know, like, you know, like a lot of arrogance, bro, it's like fucking... You know, don't talk to me like that or I'll fucking drop you, you know? Yeah, it's probably a natural progression for you fellas to go through that sort of thing in life because of, because of you know, in your fellas words, that, that humble beginning that you get brought up with, you get um, brought up pretty tough. You've gone through like T-Penil, probably one of the toughest schools in New Zealand. You, you go from, um, you know, growing up in the bush into professional rugby, playing in World Cups, playing for, you know, captaining the Sevens, Maori All Blacks and the Blues and all that kind of thing. So then all of a sudden, like, yeah, fuck, I am the man. You know what I mean? So it, it's yeah. a pretty hard thing to mm. to 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 be uh, humble yeah. when you have that sort of trajectory in life. You know, it, yeah. do, do, you th- do you feel like that's part of it or do you feel like it was just... Uh, so one thing happened, eh, bro, and I think it was like really, really uh, a massive loss for the bro and I is that we lost our dad mm. just before we became professional players. Okay. So his whole life was dedicated for us to to make it. Mm. We made it, and he sort of he sort of missed out on that. Mm. And then it was like mm. he he wasn't around for us to sort of like okay, so now we made it, dad. What do we do? You know, like okay, what do you want yeah. us to do? Yeah, you know, yeah. like how do we act now, or how do we be now? Yes. Like we lost him, and we lost we we lost our world, man. Like mm. you know, we our dad was our god, you know. So mm. we lost him. Fuck, we done. We worked out, we worked our asses off to get where we wanted to get, dad. You mm. know, and now what? And fuck, he left us, mm. and we're like we're on our own, man. You know, like and it's like what you're saying, like other players and people around us had been given the skills through their upbringing to how to handle these situations mm. financially, emotionally, but we, we didn't, bro, because we didn't have, the old man couldn't teach us about money because we never had any. Yeah, yeah. Um, emotionally, fuck me, old man did 20 years in Mount Eden, like he mm. didn't understand, you know, how to hand, emotionally handle things like that, so he never passed that on to us. Mm-hmm. So it's for us to make those mistakes and get off and learn them ourselves. Yeah, sure. So it was a tough period in, in all aspects, eh? Mm. Okay. Mm. And uh, so 
how did you get out of that, that bit of the slump that you were talking about, bro? What, what was the next steps in, in your life? Uh, obviously, you've got a pretty successful business now, and we'll get onto the Blood Brother stuff in, in a moment as well. But uh, yeah, tell us about you know where you went from when you had all the toys and then you mm. realized, fuck, mm. I'm not actually the man I think I am. <laughs> yeah. and, like there was times that I just didn't want to even leave my house, you know, it was mm. just embarrassment and shame and I thought everyone was like having a giggle at me and, you know, and I, and I just, just hate, hated that kind of stuff. But mm. I think it was just a, like um, a learning to admit that I'd made a mistake to myself mm. and, and, and the only way I can improve or learn from it is like owning, to, owning up to my mistakes mm. or owning up to my faults. Um, and then moving moving forward, man, and it's like, and you know what the the thing that really got me through a lot of it, bro, is like, I always I just always I went back to the gym and I and I just went to the gym every morning and it was like my thing was, you know, like you can take everything away from me, but you 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 can't take my health and my body away from me, and I just built little by little on top of that, bro. Like mm. I, I felt strong again, I got fit again. Uh, gave him more confidence, and I just sort of start building myself slowly up, mm. up that way. And it, fuck, bro, I was ten years, man. Like, yeah, I struggle. Yeah, where I had everything, and then I had nothing. Had a shit little car, just had nothing, bro. And, and you know, it's not until you go through something like that to you really understand, mm. you know, fucking true humbleness, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I get you, bro. Let's talk about because. Uh, what, what, when do you followers usually do your live streams for Blood Brothers? Like, oh, well, 8 o'clock game up. Yeah, yeah. Eight, Is it? 8, 8 o'clock on a, on a win. Yeah, oh, sorry. But, but not, um, we sort of pull back and we do it like once a month now. Or oh, okay. Every so. couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to eat into your time. Nah, so. nah, no, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. First of the month, every, oh yeah, first Wednesday of every month we try and yeah. program yeah. it up. And okay. All right. Well, let, let's have a little chat about Blood Brothers for people that are coming into like, uh, your audience a little bit later you can you know use this as a bit of a um intro, right? yeah a bit of an intro bro and, and, and talk, talk about it, where it, how it all come about so mm -hmm. uh bro I, I remember when you fellas like first started doing like little live streams of it oh, did bro, I, it, it, it was rough eh? bro uh, yeah well <laughs> i mean it was still like in terms of like production quality or whatever yeah. it might have been a, a bit rough but it was still quite ahead of the times for, for New Zealand and for like hunting and that kind of stuff, you know. So that's why I found it. That's why I still remember it. Because yeah, yeah. like not well, many people work. were like doing doing that yeah. sort of thing back then, you know. Yeah, yeah. But um, so obviously everybody knows you fellows have a like um, a real strong passion for hunting and fishing and that kind of thing. What made you think, fuck, I might just have a yarn on <laughs> Facebook or whatever and talk about it? Yeah, it was... Um we were we were looking for we were looking how to give how to give our mato and all our knowledge back to people that um, didn't know mm. um, and we were thinking ah oh. and I'd just come out of TV career and I told the brother fuck I don't want to go back on TV because I didn't like some parts of it that happened sure I didn't like it. And he said, bro, but we we can we can do this, you know, we can go live on Facebook and to fuck the masses. And I went, mm. oh, okay, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, as long as it's not scripted or, yeah, yeah. no, well, we'll do a little bit of work around this, but, yeah. Mm. The, well, there's no censoring and no holds barred and nah, you can talk about yeah. whatever you want to, bro. So. You can talk and, you know, leave it up to the, the people who want to watch it. If they want to watch it, you watch it, yeah, you exactly, know, and yeah. if you don't want to watch it, well, don't watch it. It's right. pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we're sort of having conversations. Fuck, how can we do this? What can we do? Mm. You know, and I'm not sure how we come up with Blood Brothers as a name or fuck. It was, yeah, yeah or I was watching well, this um, <laughs> program did, one time and, and it was uh, about <laughs> these two these brothers, these two lions and their brothers. Mm. And the the um, the name of the doc, doco was called um, Brothers in Blood. Ah, and okay. these two, two lions in their blood. Brothers and they just went and smashing every other, every all these. Bro, I think I've seen it, eh? <laughs> Bro, I think I've seen it, eh? <laughs> fuck, I should have known that. Eh? <laughs> smashing all these other lines. Anyway, yeah. just, well, that's a mean name. And I couldn't really say, oh, brothers and blood. Mm. So I'll oh, just use blood brothers. Yeah, right. And obviously, blood mm. brothers, mm -hmm. but blood like killing animals, mm. you know, could have sort of the whole sort of thing about blood and that. 
um, that, that's how we got our name. And bro, it was really just like, people just keep asking us, because we'll put, chuck a photo of us hunting and fishing and, and heaps of people just ask us, oh man, like, what are you guys doing and how do you do that? And it's yeah. like, oh, people like find this interesting. Like, yeah. this is just what we do, you know? It's like, oh, fuck. Should we tell people what we do, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so, oh, bro, should we just like, should we just sit down and have a yarn about our upbringing? And then, and that's how sort of, that's mm. how it started, bro. And it's how it's morphed into. Yeah, right. it, yeah. So, do you, how often do you fellas go out hunting? I, I think what sort of happened recently, eh, mm. but hunts more than I do. Mm. Uh, but I maybe fish or dive more than he does. So, ah, uh, okay. So we sort of like, um, he's sort of like, we both love both. We love. We yes. both love hunting, fishing, diving. Yes. But the bro's got some room, so he's got our dogs and our horses, mm. and I've got the boat and mm. fishing gear and that kind of thing. So we just share each other what we do, you know. Mm. Okay, and that way I suppose you can double, like increase your sort of content that you're putting content. out there as well, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. You know, as well as um, Rube's son, Rube's yes. yep. come on board, and he's fucking fishing fiend you know you know it's got to be a point zero weight uncle and this and all <laughs> yeah mate, 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 i was watching him do his market. knots the other yeah, day bro. Oh, bro. Oh, hey. <laughs> real real technical um you know looks looks at the weather beforehand instead of going fuck me let's go you know, yeah, you know, yeah. fuck it, give me a howling storm fucking sweet air yeah, let's go you know kind of thing yeah. oh no uncle the wind's gonna drop off at uh, 11 o'clock it's be <laughs> three knots from the east and, <laughs> fuck, I mean, you know, but it's good because yeah. it's actually balanced us up a bit you know yeah. whereas normally it's just fuck boat it's you know, if, yeah, get the boat let's go yeah, yeah. crazy so, antics but here's a question for you followers um how much of the information that you learned from your old man do you still use today? And and I guess it's a two-part question in that how much has like the hunting and fishing game changed in that time? Because I guess with the introduction of all this, like you say, like all technology and fucking all the gear and all that sort of mm-hmm. stuff, people are sort of relying on that a little bit more. But uh, yeah, do you still use like yeah, our, so our, much of that other stuff? Our grounding, our grounding is, is off the old man, bro. Like mm-hmm. our grounding... And everything we do on top of that, we can build and pick up what we want. Mm. But our grounding is 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 from the old man. Um, and what we realise is that he actually taught us a lot more than we actually know. We know we know. Mm. You know, like my son will ask me about something, and I'll like explain to him, and it's like, oh, I didn't realise I even knew that. You know, it's <laughs> like it's sort of just we're tucked away there. Yeah, we, yeah. we actually know a lot about this stuff, and yeah, it was just because sure. of our upbringing. Yeah. Mm. Um, but getting back to sort of like different ways of techniques and how we sort of fishing's changed and all that and hunting with thermal scopes now and all that we mm. didn't have all that mm. but the fundamentals are still the same yes but also the most important thing is the um, understanding your environment and your animals uh, appreciation for nature and that kind of thing because mm. sometimes in some aspects it's got too far one way where it's all about the kill you know it's all about the the money shot and the picture mm. for facebook yeah whether where they're, they're losing what it's really all you know what it's really all about is like um putting yourself against nature and challenging mm. yourself and respecting the animal you're hunting or you're you know mm. and that's what it's all about bro it's mm. like it's the it's not the kill it's the hunt you know mm. and if you don't make a kill well that's just it man yeah it's that's, that's Part of it, you know, still enjoying so, that process, say, hey, not, not the outcome, and yeah. enjoying the environment, enjoying the surroundings, you know, mm. enjoying hanging out with your mates, and you know, and 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 learning, and, and sort of, you know, those special times, and it's not just really about chucking lead in there, and mm. you know, making something for for the fun at home. What I'll do is I'll link down uh, below in the description box. Um, the Instagram for Blood Brothers, the Facebook page, so you guys can also tune into these fellas' uh, live streams when they do it. If somebody just happened to be very green with this kind of thing and they wanted to get involved um, with like hunting or fishing, what would be like the, the the first steps that they should take to to do it the right way? Yeah, so if they want to go for a hunt, but honestly, just give us a message because you don't need. Uh, two thousand dollars worth of flash clothes mm. you don't need the thermal scope you haven't got dogs all of that kind of stuff but it's pretty basic you know 
Um, yeah, it depends on their situation, obviously. Mm. But give us a message and we'll go, okay. And like Rube's taken out heaps of people. I've taken out heaps of people hunting. And it's about building their knowledge from a, from from the base up on what they should be looking for. You know, are we in the bush? We're looking for pig rooting, whatever, deer, venison, whatever, mm. signs. What are they feeding on at the moment? All of those different things, all of the different mātauranga that the old man taught us. Mm. They're like Rube said, you know, when someone asks us, you go, oh, bro, they should be on the Nico berries at the moment. Yeah, the Nico berries are falling at the moment or they'll be transferring to the middle so they'll be in the native or blah, 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 this yeah, kind of bro. stuff. Um, I see many levels to this, bro. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Bro, how, how much does um, Māori tanga play a part in, in your hunting or like your ties to the whenua and that kind of thing. Do, is, it, is a lot of the values that you guys have come from that side of things? or Because uh, I feel like, you know, respecting the animal and, and understanding your environment and the, uh, and the bush and all that kind of thing is very closely aligned to mm. to what, you know, our ancestors and stuff believed in. Oh, bro, 100%, man. Like, it's really, really, really strong. Although, and unfortunately, like, um, we don't have great great real on that, but um, that doesn't make us any less Māori than anyone else, you know. And even more so, bro, like our our tikanga, um, our our wairua, and the, our spiritual connection between um, the living, you know, the, the animals and the nahiri and the moana mm. is really really strong, bro. Like, um, and that's where we get a lot we we get a lot of it, bro. It's said. We're not religious, but we're re really, really spiritual, and it's yeah. a real mouldy thing. Yeah, yeah. It's a real mouldy thing, bro. Yeah, so uh, really, really strong, really strong, bro. Like, you know, like the old people, you know, the old man, you know, like a sound of a more pork outside would mean a different thing mm. or to what might happen tomorrow. You know, the connection yeah, between right. mm. animals and, and humans back in those days. Well, we got a taste of that, bro. Like, we understood her. You know, we we got a, we got a strong taste of that, and we still mm. carry quite a bit of that, eh, bro? Mm. Yeah, I don't. I, I think don't. that's why, like, part of the uh, interest for me, like, and me not having anything to do with hunting or fishing or diving, but um, those little sort of lessons that you guys talk about is sort of interesting to me mm. on a few oh, on a few different levels. You know, mm. and uh, that's uh, I think that's probably why you guys have grown uh, such a big following behind it you know so um yeah really yeah. enjoy your your fellow's co thank, thank you bro thank you um yeah i think uh that'll that'll be enough for today i think i yeah. don't want to chew your fellow's ear off yeah. um but uh, again i appreciate your fellow's time and thank you for coming into the gym and chatting to us about your background and your football and um what what makes you guys tick and also um big shout out bro for uh, letting us know a little bit more about you know the struggles that mm. happen, particularly um, I don't know we've got I suppose we've got a lot of mutual mates that are ex pro footy players, and this mm. this sort of thing happens a lot of the time. You know, there's mm. a bit of a crash after uh, after pro football because then real life starts, and, Ooh, uh, yeah. and then it's all on. <laughs> so uh, yeah, short for that, brothers. Um, maybe we'll get you in for another episode once. Uh, once we grow our, our own following here at Raw okay. uh, to as big as uh, what you fellas have got. But yeah, thanks a lot, boys. Uh, fantastic. Thank you very much. Yep. Kia ora, brother. Nga mihi, brother. Joyce.